I like to help people out in the Adobe Animate subreddit whenever I can. I've been using Adobe Animate for about 20 years now, so I figure I must know what I'm doing by this point. The other day I came across a post where someone was struggling with their animation file. They couldn't figure out why certain drawings were exporting when they shouldn't be. So I reached out and they sent me the file so I could take a look. Let's see if we can fix this up for them and set it up so it's actually ready to animate properly. Ready? Let's go. Okay, so just opening the file here, the very first thing I want to do is I'm going to delete the audio because I don't know if that's going to get flagged on my YouTube channel. So let's just render this. You hit Control Enter to um, render a Swift file. So the problem that the uh, animator was having was that uh, the closed eye symbol is sort of appearing on top of the open eyes here uh, when it's exported. However, as you can see in the file itself, that's not happening. So it looks okay in the file, but when you render a Swift, it doesn't. So I came into this file thinking, oh, I know how to fix that. Uh, it's probably one of these symbols is um not a symbol and it's probably a movie clip so that's a mistake that a lot of new adobe animate users make is they use movie clips instead of graphic symbols uh which you know works in some cases but if you're just doing mainly character animation you want to make sure that all your symbols are actually graphic and not movie clip Sometimes uh, the movie clips will not play in the file, but they'll play when you render it. Which is kind of the opposite problem here. So after poking around, I really couldn't figure out why that was happening. But when you look at this whole file, you can see it's got a lot going on here, right? And looking in the library, there's also a lot going on here. So my approach was rather than trying to band-aid one small problem with the eyes, why don't we just clean all of this up and start fresh? Because uh, sometimes that's just what you have to do. It's a little painful, but you got to do what you got to do. It's good to start fresh sometimes with a nice clean file. So if we take a look here, then we can see that this animator imported some bitmaps from Photoshop of their cute little character here. And if you look in the library, you can see tween one, tween two, three, four, it goes all the way down to 110 tweens. So what does this mean? What this means is when you have a library full of tween one, two, three, tween one billion, it means that you're adding a tween, which is this little purple section, to something that wasn't symbolized. So for example, I'll make a new layer here to show you what I mean. I'll just draw something random. So this is just paint strokes. I'm going to group these with control G which is different from a symbol. And I have a video about that if you want to check it out, what the difference is. So let's say I want to move this group from here to here. Up. So I made a keyframe, moved him up. So when I make a tween, it warns you. The selected frames cannot be tweened. You must convert the frame content to a symbol in order to tween. Do you want to convert and create a tween? You do, but you don't want Animate to do that for you. So you always say no here. Do not click this shiny blue button that says OK. Click no, I don't want you to do that. Because what it's going to do, let's uh, click it and just I'll show you here. It's going to make a tween for you. And this is very useless to you as a character animator. Because, for example, as you can see, tween one, two are the same drawing. So what it's doing is it's making brand new symbols for every single new drawing that you've made. Uh, and we don't want that. You want to make your symbol yourself. You don't want Animate to do that for you. Or you're going to have a library full of all this crap 
and you're gonna get so lost and it's gonna be a nightmare. F8 is the default to create a symbol, name it whatever you want. There you go. Now, as you can see, I still have my keyframe of the group. Let's get rid of that keyframe. Make a new keyframe, move it up here. I've got my two keyframes, tween it. And you notice I didn't get that pop-up because now my goofy character or symbol is right here and I can keep track of it. And it's not gonna make 500 different little tweens here, right? All right, so let's get rid of that. Yes, I want to delete Goofy. So let's see what happened here. This animator imported all of their bitmapped uh, drawings from Photoshop and just started animating them without symbolizing them first. And that's why we have all these tweens. First thing I want to say is I want to congratulate this animator for even giving this a shot. I think this is the best way to learn Adobe Animate or any animation program, really. You just need to dive in and try some stuff. And that's exactly what this person did. So they just dove in, they started animating and twining stuff, got themselves into a bit of a mess, but they went online and asked for help. And honestly, that's the best way to do it. There's so many animators that are just really reluctant. They ask so many questions. Oh, what um, software should I use? What sort of tablet should I get? Uh, what time of the year should I animate? Am I too old? Am I too young? You just have to forget all that stuff. Just make a file and start moving stuff around. That's the best way to learn. And when you get stuck, you go to Reddit and ask questions. And hopefully somebody will help you out. So I'm going to take all of this animation and put it inside of a symbol so we can keep all of the old animation. And how I do that is I'll select all the layers, copy the layers. I'm going to go insert a new symbol. We'll just call it our old comp. Comp is just a word that we always use in TV animation for a group of symbols that are inside of a symbol. So now I'm going to paste all those layers in here. Give it a second to think. And it's off center a little bit, but that's okay. So let's get out of this new symbol. Make a new layer on top of our original timeline. Get our old, our new comp. Oh, I've just confused myself. Our new symbol called old comp. Put it on top. And we can roughly place it where the other stuff is and delete all of these layers. So now I have the same animation that we had before. It's just inside of its own symbol. And I'm just gonna move it over here. So I'm just going to set the opacity and the properties of the layer to 50%. Uh, let's bump it up to 25%. And I'm gonna lock this layer. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna rebuild this character using all of this artist's drawings. So first we'll start with the body and I'm just gonna drag it in here and place it. And as you can see, got some snapping going on here that I don't like. You can hit control question mark and uncheck all these snapping boxes here and that will get rid of it. So we have the body, we have the face. This is another part of the face that I will put into a new face symbol later. And as you can see, there's a little speck of um, artwork here that's gonna kind of get in the way when you're trying to animate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to break this bitmap and then animate that's control B and it turns it into a giant texture. If you go into your colors, you can see that all of the bitmaps are selectable as textures here. If you ever wanna change a texture that way, that's how you do that. So let's just chop off the bottom half of this. There we go. We can group this back up with Control G and now it's a little better. So now we want to make sure that these are all layered. So 
in Adobe Animate. If you select group or bitmap or symbols and they're all on one layer, you can press control and the up and down arrows and it will layer everything properly. So let's just check to see if this is all set up. I'm gonna set the opacity back to 100. So I'll make some adjustments here. Let's bring the bell on top of the collar. That's control up. And I'd say that looks pretty close. All right, so let's turn this layer off. I'm gonna grab all of my bitmaps here. And one by one, I'm going to symbolize them. We don't wanna animate these bitmaps. We wanna symbolize them first before we animate them. So we push F8. Let's name this hair. So let's uh, make sure our layering is proper. That looks good. So now I'm going to select all of my symbols and I want to make sure that everything I have selected here is actually a symbol and not a group or a bitmap. And these all look great. So what I want to do now is we want to make sure that um, these symbols, if we go inside of them, we get a new timeline. These symbols don't play through every drawing that's in here. So we want to select all of them and set them to play single frame. Now when we grab it, we can see that they're all set to single frame. This will be especially useful for the face. So let's go into the face. Let's find that other drawing with the eyes closed and the mouth open. So this is our default face. We're gonna make a new frame here, F7. And we're gonna basically draw the face with the eyes closed and the mouth open. There we go. And it looks like we're missing a nose. I can't remember if uh, Kitty had a nose or not. Let's go into our old comp and see if Kitty had a nose with the mouth open pose. Oh, nope, they didn't. Great. So let's get out of here. Go back into our face symbol. And there you go. So what I've done is I've put both face drawings into one symbol called face. And what that'll let us do is whenever we want the kitty's eyes to close and mouth to open, we'll just set the face symbol to frame two, like that. You can also open up uh, the frame picker window, but I already have mine open. So when you select a symbol that has more than one drawing, it will let you pick which frame you want. Uh, and then it will automatically make a keyframe for you. Just like that. Isn't that nice? So now our kitty is all ready to go. We still can't animate it until all of these symbols are on their own layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to symbolize all of these symbols and call it kitty com. And if you go into this symbol, we have all of our symbols inside there, but they need to be on their own layer. So what you can do is with all the symbols selected, right click, distribute to layers. And animate will put every single one on its own layer and name the layer whatever the symbol name is. Isn't that nice? The only problem is it didn't extend my um, frames. So what you can do is I like to just come out here and see how many frames I have, 94. Go back in and grab all the layers, push F5. And now we have all the layers and timeline that we need. So what this person could do now is they've got a fresh file that's ready to animate. And if they want to close the eyes on frame 29, can do that. If they want to animate the pause coming up on frame 36, we would put the pause down here. 
let's say we want the pause to come up starting on frame 30. Create a keyframe, add a twain, and there you go. So I won't reanimate this entire thing for this person. I want them to do that themselves, of course. But I just wanted to sort of show you how you can get yourself out of a tight spot if you just dive into animate and you start tweening stuff and then you sort of get lost. And if you really want to, you can go in here and clean up everything else. We still have our old kitty comp here that we don't need anymore. So let's delete that. And now that that's deleted, we don't want any of these tween 5 million, right? I could select all of these and delete them like that. Or in the library, you click this little sandwich up here and you find select unused items. Animate will find every item that isn't on the stage or in the timeline and select it for you. And as you can see, it's selecting all these tweens because I deleted the old comp that had all those tweens in there. So we can just hit trash can and it's gonna say, oh no, are you sure? You say yes and yes, you really do wanna delete 118 million tweens. And there you go. Now the file is all cleaned up. It's ready to animate and we're good to go. All right, that's this file all cleaned up and ready to animate. If you've got questions about animate or run into a similar problem in your own files, you can leave me a comment. Uh, I might be able to help and it could even inspire another video like this one. If you want more, I've got playlists for both my tutorials and my animated progress series where you can see more step-by-step -step workflows. And if this kind of video does well, I might do more fixer style walkthroughs in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.